Cammy's Comic Corner! I'm your host as always, Cammy! Now here's your spoiler warning, I'm spoiling shit left and right, you'll be all like, yeah this is cool, what? Oh, why'd he spoil that for me? So that's your warning right there. So moving on to the pick of the week! From Image, we have Who is Jake Ellis, number two, written by Nathan Edmondson and art by Tonsi Zonjic. Now, I was a fan of the first issue because I had no idea what was going on, but this one we get a little bit more backstory of how Mr. John Moore and Mr. Jake Ellis kind of became friends, became buddies. Not really, but uh, looks like some experimenting from a certain facility was going on at that time. When we last left him, he was trying to evade the police on a train from Paris, and it looks like in this issue he got caught, and the highest bidder sent to retrieve him are the Americans. So apparently the Americans want him for some unknown reason. He doesn't know why, Jake doesn't know why. All that Jake knows is he needs to get the hell out of here quickly because the Americans are coming by rather quickly soon. And so uh, he gets them out of this holding cell, they, they make their way out, and they decide that maybe they want to explore why uh, the Americans want him, so they taser one of them, take him out back into the woods and say, okay, you know, what's what's the dealio yo? Apparently, John Moore used to be a CIA analyst, and the, the, the Defense Intelligence Agency is trying to bring him back in. They're like, listen, you know, uh, apparently 18 nationals were swept up by this uh, facility and experimented on, and you are the only survivor that we know of, so we want to know what they did to you. But before he can strike out a deal, see if John wants to talk a little bit more, he's killed, and the facility guys are after him again. And after uh, getting away from them, John kind of realizes, comes to a, a sudden realization that maybe, maybe that whole job that was uh, messed up in Barcelona, maybe Jake Ellis made it messed up, uh, made, made it made it mess up on purpose. Maybe him and, and Jake are one. Maybe he was trying to sabotage himself he, he, just to find out who was behind the facility. Really, really weird stuff because he's putting his own life in danger now and he's not sure if he likes this. Gorgeous art by Tansi Zonjic. It's, it's just great. Uh, it, I especially love the word bubbles, but it's just the action, the suspense, the thriller. We still don't really have a good grip of what's going on. All we know is guys on the run. It kind of feels like the Born Identity. Great bang for your buck. I highly recommend you pick this up. Uh, issues one and two as soon as possible. Now on to the Fast Five! First up from Marvel, we have Fantastic Four, number 588. Now, spoiler warning, this is the last issue ever of the Fantastic Four. Well, I mean, last issue as in, wait until next year, then it'll come back. But now it's going to be the Future Foundation from now on. And speaking of the Future Foundation, their number one goal after last issue is to kill Annihilus. It is just the whole wake of the Annihilus event. Avengers didn't get there in time. Everyone's mourning the death of Johnny Storm. I mean, spoilers if the news didn't already spoil it for you up last month. And so Reed is, you know, going back to his lab. Uh, Sue wants to be alone. And the Future Foundation, they're going to go off and kill Annihilus. Ben needs to get out some... Uh, some frustration, so he calls his buddies Thor and Banner. They make a make the men's of it, and then um, Spider-Man teams up with Franklin, and it's just a simple chat on the roof about uncles because uh, uh, Peter Parker knows what it's like to lose an uncle, and he helps comfort Franklin. And you know, it, it, Franklin sa thinks he could have saved his uncle, and Spider-Man knows he could have saved his uncle, and so it's just a good moment between Franklin and Spider-Man. And, you know, remembering Uncle Johnny, I thought it was a very nice little send-off uh, until next year when he comes back. But uh, very good issue. Not a, lot of, uh, not a lot of word bubbles in the first half. And I think that's really compelling storytelling right there when you can just look at the art and still know what's up. Next up from Dark Horse, we have King Conan and the Scarlet Citadel number one. Now, we have the, uh, the King of Aquilonia telling to this, this uh, scribe, of his rise to power, and this king is a uh, King Conan. So apparently, Conan the Barbarian, years down the line, is a ruler of his own kingdom. And he tells about how, when he was still uh, a ruler of Aquilonia way back when, he was captured. Uh, he was taken to this enemy's country and by this evil wizard, and he had to battle his way back to you know get back at the wizard, but reclaim uh, Aquilonia for his own people. It's just. I, I like a good Conan story as much as the next guy, but uh, as of late, they've been really good stories, and this one in particular, though, really rose to the top. And look at that Derek Robinson cover. It's just gorgeous. Uh, it's well worth the money, and if you're a big Conan fan, then try something new. It's only a four-issue miniseries. What do you got to lose? Just good storytelling uh, runs rampant in, in this issue. Yeah. 
Next up from IDW, we have Star Trek Infestation number two. Now, if you're a fan of Star Trek, and I mean the original series, and you're a fan of zombies, and I mean like Romero zombies, and you're ever you're wondering, laying awake at night going, you know what would be the perfect crossover? If zombies and Spock got together and fought. Well, guess what, loyal, loyal viewer? I got a treat for you. The infestation event that's going, off, going on over at IDW has reached its little slimy zombie claws into the Star Trek universe. And guess what? We have Kirk, Bones McCoy, and Spock taking on legions of the undead on this one planet. They get assisted by these robots who say that their creator actually helped make and spread the zombie virus, un, 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 unbeknownst to him, because this evil girl, Britt, came and helped him with the formula. And apparently she's like a ruler of the undead kind of kind of deal going on. And now it's up to McCoy to make a, a serum, uh, make a cure for this zombie uh, virus, and uh, make an aerosol form to cure the whole world. Well, they do at the end, but getting there is the hard part, because Brick comes back, she's like, Who the fuck's been up in my shit? I'm to tr tr treat my zombies like humans again. So they have to fight and say, it's just fun. It's wacky, sci-fi fun. And if you're a fan of either zombies or Star Trek, it's a good, it's a very well put together two issue miniseries. I don't know how it's going to be collected. So you might as well go out and buy the, these two issues. But yes, fun stuff. It's just, it's, it's logical to, for you to pick up this series. Next up from Vertigo, we have Scalp number 46. Now we have Catcher testing officers falls down uh he's testing his fate saying listen if you're uh, just if you're been a good man then the gods are gonna help you through this lair and this lair has rattlesnakes dangling it has freaking just oh bear traps it is not a fun place to be and officer falls down knows he's he's kind of fucked and he'd rather catch her just end his life quickly than having to torture him and go on these wild little uh, these uh, these speeches about how uh, he, God told him to kill Gina and God told him to do all this other stuff because Officer Falls Down isn't believing in the same gods or thunder gods or higher powers that Catcher obviously is. Meanwhile, we have um, Red Crow finally visiting Lawrence Belcourt. It's been a while, and Belcourt gives him some really crucial information about how Gina was kind of... Um, you know, spooked last time she was there, and how someone all, has been in love with her all these years later, still, and they both know who he's talking about. It's Catcher. So now Red Crow finally knows who Gina's killer is, and he's about to go rectify it. But it seems that um, Bad Horse's mom, Gina, has uh, been helping someone, and it's 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 Officer Balls now. She helps him escape to safety, only he has been shanked by uh, Catcher, so in a way he has survived. But now he's going to bleed out in the snow while Catcher goes to confront Bad, or Bad Horse and tell him, Hey, listen, I know who killed your mom, and I'm going to help you take him down. I don't think Catcher's going to throw himself under the bus. I'm pretty sure he's going to point the finger at Red Crow and say, See, Bad Horse, you should kill him. God told me so. Good issue nonetheless. Uh, this Arm Guerra's heavy inks in this issue really set the tone. And if you've been a, a big fan of Scalp like I am, you're really going to enjoy this issue. And finally this week from Marvel, we have Avengers number 10. And it's, once again, you know, the whole Infinity Gems. And the Avengers have divided up into teams, and they're all going to go separately to find the remaining Infinity Gems before the Hood does. We have Floor, the Hulk, and Namor going down to the bottom depths of the, you know, deepest oceans to retrieve his gem. We have the X-Men going back to the... Uh, the, the mansion in the old danger room, having to fight off the danger room just to get to that one Infinity Gem. And then uh, Iron Man going to New Mexico, Roswell, Area 51, because that's where he's hidden his. He, he bought the Glen from the government years ago, and, you know, it's the safest place on Earth. Oh, wait! There's the hood. He just got the Infinity Gem, and he teleported to the rest of them elsewhere. We don't know where, but as he teleports to find the next Infinity Gem, he's confronted by Thor and Hulk and Namor. So it's going to be a very interesting next issue, but it was the banter and then just the whole team dynamics in this issue, and all the action, too, from the Danger Room, that really intrigued me, and it's a fun story. As much as I hate the 15 Avengers titles, this one title in particular is fun because they're, it's Avengers. Everyone in that book is an Avenger, and they're all going to try to get back the Infinity Gems from the hood. Good, good times. Good, good story. Good, gorgeous art. Well, comic book fans, that does it this week for Games Comic Corner. If you want more Games Comic Corner goodness, you can head on over to www.gamescomiccorner.com. From there, you can read the Book of the Month reviews. You can see the top shelf reviews that I do every month. And then you can see every Friday my favorite covers of the week. 
This week, a lot of good covers, I can tell you that. Also, check out Geeky Talkie at kingscomiccorner.com slash geeky talkie. Last week, I did uh, a whole 2001... 2001? What am I? A decade old? 2011 movies. Uh, we're, we're looking... Me and Nick Fury are looking into the future and seeing what's coming out, what looks good to us this year. And then, finally... Thanks to Rising Sun Creations at rsc-online.com for supplying the best of U.S. comic books, manga, and collectible toys imported straight from Japan, all located at their store in Mission Valley. Or if you can't get to San Diego, then head on over to their online store, rsc-online.com. Special thanks again for being a sponsor. Well, it is the uh, Oscars tonight, so I've got to go get ready. I don't want to brag, but I have been invited, um, not to the, the Oscars itself, mind you, but to a party that, uh, that I'm hosting. And I invited myself because I'm the only person who would actually come to my own party. So uh, as I uh, party, as in drink lots of alcohol and predict that the Cami speech should have won Best Picture, I wish you all the best in, in your Oscar parties. And I hope you're not feeling too bad that you didn't invite me. Take it easy! Hey!